Good morning. morning. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Good, I didn't have to do it twice. (laughs) Welcome to the Easter Sunday 11 a.m. service here at Lester Memorial Methodist Church. We want to welcome this beautiful crowd we have here in the sanctuary this morning, as well as those that are with us via live stream and on radio. And good morning, choir. And and handbell choir. Man, I am surrounded up here. Hope you somewhere around here. Hope. Hope you're okay. All right. Good deal. Um, Don't have many announcements this morning, but uh, first off, I'd like to say this week, which has been Holy Week, of course, has been and continues to be a very special time in the life of Lester Memorial. We've been blessed with some memorable services and events the past few days, and I personally want to thank Harvey and Joe and Tyler and Kathleen and our beautiful choir for all the uh, hard work they've done this week. This church may not really realize it, but we're truly blessed. Um, the uh, Coming up uh, here uh, next, uh, next tomorrow, uh, we begin the month of April, and this whole month we'll be celebrating the 100th anniversary of the very building that we are sitting in right now. Uh, the entire month of April, each Sunday, we'll be remembering the history of Lester Memorial and celebrating the almost 140 years this church has been in existence here in Aniana. So uh, keep this church in your prayer and all of the uh, pastors and staff members have worked so hard for y'all. So uh, without any further ado, let's begin our worship service and may you be richly blessed by it. Please stand with us. We're going to sing Crown Him with Many Crowns. That's on page 327. We will sing all four verses.
The Apostles' Creed for those worshiping at home can be found on page 882 of the Methodist hymnal. Especially in these trying times, it's needed more than ever to affirm our belief as Christians. Please join with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Universal Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. seated. We're so delighted that you're here with us on this glorious, glorious day. As the scriptures tell us in the Psalms that this is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and let us be glad in it. Uh, in human history, no greater day than this one to know that our God came alive. And we're so glad you're here to worship. We, I know we got a lot of visitors. Some of you are with family. Some of you perhaps for the first time. I'm Pastor Harvey Beck and we're so glad that you come our way to worship with us wanted to say one other thing about the 100-year celebration. So we're in a 100-year-old building. The marquee marks 1923, but the first service, according to the Southern Democrat, the information that we received historically was that yesterday, 100 years ago yesterday, March the 30th, they held the first service in here. They didn't have the pews. They had not come in yet, so... I don't know all the details, but they gathered in chairs, I would assume, but anyway. So we're going to celebrate that during uh, April, and just praise God for uh, how many Easter's we've had together in this sanctuary, and how many souls have come to Jesus. Kind of overwhelming to think about it. But anyway, we're very blessed and grateful, and we're thankful that you're here. Please take time to look at the prayer concerns we've got quite a few there but just keep lifting them up as the Holy Spirit leads you pray over them lay your hands on on those names during the week and just lift them up in prayer please know that this altar is always open anytime if a song touches you you need to come and kneel and tell God thank you please feel that freedom and you can come now uh, as we will go to the Lord in prayer and I'm going to come and kneel and again thank you and praise God for this day let's go to the Lord in prayer God is I as I bow my knees here, I just hit me how many people have knelt here and called out to you, and it's kind of overwhelming. How many pastors have preached the Word of God? How many pastors have walked in here uh, days ahead or weeks ahead as preparation? We still do that, we preachers that are here. We come in here sometimes during the week and just be alone with you and fear you and uh, respect you and honor you and know that we're called to deliver your word thank you God for this altar and altars all around the world millions of believers glorifying you and praising you for what you did for us I can say thank you but it, that seems too simple but I join with my brothers and sisters this morning in our heart felt gratitude we do thank you for what you've done Jesus we celebrate that you're alive but we know that you had to go to the cross because of us and because of our sin oh Jesus thank you thank you when your hour came you did the will of the Father Holy Spirit thank you already for the music and the worship that we've already lifted up to you 
May you continue to bless in this service everyone that's here. We all have our, our needs. We all have our woundedness. We all have our brokenness. And we admit we are sinners and we need a Savior. And thank you, God, for sending Jesus. We praise you this day. Continue to bless throughout this service. Thank you, God, that we can pray for one another in our need. And I thank you, God, for those who are crying out to you and needing healing. But I thank you, God, that we as brothers and sisters in Christ have been given the authority and the privilege of speaking the name of Jesus Christ over people whom we love. So right now, in the name of Jesus, just all over this sanctuary and in the balcony and choir names are being brought to the throne of grace God thank you for the power of prayer that we not only have a conversation with you but when we enter into prayer we we just ask for your Holy Spirit to touch other people how wonderful prayer is come Holy Spirit and touch all whom we're thinking about whether they need to be saved whether they need to be healed Mentally, emotionally, psychologically, you care about the whole person. Again, we praise you this day. Thank you, God. Thank you that many, many families will join together this afternoon and probably eat some ham and some deviled eggs. And Thank you, God, for family. Thank you, God, for so many times in the Bible you talked about the feast. and We celebrated Thursday night, the night that you instituted communion, the table. Oh, God. As we celebrate this afternoon with family, remind us that you called us into your family to dine at your table. What a God you are. We praise your holy name. And now, church family, join with me as Jesus taught his disciples, saying together, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Aren't you glad that we say that we serve a God who is indeed alive? Because he lives. We're about to sing that together, but I just wanted to read the words of the refrain, which you all know, but sometimes it's so easy just to sing something familiar and not really let it go into your spirit and be consciously aware of the words that you're actually singing. So I know I'm guilty of that. So I just wanted to read these words. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives... All fear is gone because I know he holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. Amen. Can everybody stand with us, please? So we're going to sing all three verses of Because He Lives. Yeah. 
as the ushers are coming forward, I'm led to say something right now. Uh, that song talks about the future, and we've talked about uh, coming up in April, the 100 years of this church, but I wanted you to see these four young ladies that are standing up here in front of me. Uh, Kennedy, Maggie, Anna, and Lizzie, this is the future of Lester Memorial, and uh, I don't know, I just, I love these girls to death, but... Okay, now, let's go to the Lord in prayer. <laughs> Most gracious God, you showed your powerful love by raising Jesus from death to eternal life. We're grateful that you forgive our sins and bring peace to all that trust you. Help us offer your forgiveness, your reconciliation with people in our lives, and may we respond to your tremendous love with glad and generous hearts as we dedicate these gifts and offerings in the name of Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. Amen.
Every fear I'd ever had just melted in.
Everybody said amen. amen. Good stuff. Praise the Lord. A lot of hard work. I appreciate everybody all week long. All the special services were beautiful. Um, I almost made a mistake of teasing the bells while ago as they were looking at them and getting in order. And I kind of came up here and acting like I was switching them and swapping the bells. I got the look. So uh, thank you all. It was beautiful. And the timing of everything. And Mike Bucklew, thank you for that song. I, I noticed you got just a little bit choked up there. But there's that moment. Because when you sing that song, that moment when Jesus touches your heart and it does something to you. So praise the Lord. God is good. Amen. I've already shared with you about the 100th celebration um, as we prepare for it. I want to go back to January and share with you, uh, just remind you, if you weren't here, that's fine, and some of you are visiting, but just real quickly, in January, several sermons, and I said I would continue to bring that up throughout the year. I just felt like it was important for our church to remind ourselves of something that Jesus said about you and about me and about the 100-year-old congregation that was here 100 years ago. Jesus said in Matthew 5, 13, You are the salt of the earth. He is risen right there. That reminds us right there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Piper. You are the salt of the earth. So he's talking about you and I as Christians, but then he says, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? So Jesus is giving us a simple illustration. We all have salt at our house. Around the world, salt is used to flavor food. But if salt loses its flavor, he's talking about Christians. Then Jesus said in Mark 9, 49, Every sacrifice is seasoned with salt. Then he said, Have salt in yourself. Have me in yourself is what he's saying. And you'll have peace with one another. So God wants us to have godly flavor. i just remind you of the word God gave us back in January. Our theme for Lent has been prepare your heart. Here's one of the hearts that one of the children, as we had our Ash Wednesday service in the upper room on February the 14th, the kids writ, wrote down things on the heart and they laid them on the altar in the upper room and I, I asked Carol to leave them there for most of Lent just to remind us. And so I've, I've kept one of those hearts and I keep it in my Bible and it was one verse that I emphasized, and Joe and I emphasized, Tyler, and I hope you'll memorize it. It's Proverbs 4.23. Above all else, above all else, guard your heart. Proverbs 4.23, above all else, guard your heart, for everything that you do flows from it. Just a quick reminder guard or protect our inmost being because that's what our heart is heart is the source of our thoughts our attitudes our beliefs and our actions above all else church guard your heart Satan hates our heart and he doesn't want clean good things in it he certainly does not want Jesus there guard your heart above all else for out of it flow the issues of life you see your bulletin, you'll see that the picture that I've put on the front of the bulletin I think we'll have up on the screen. And It's hard for me not to always pick out a picture and that doesn't have a cross on it, even though this is Easter. And I know we preachers say this every Easter Sunday, but you can't have Easter. You can't have an empty tomb if you don't have a cross. So we have to preach Christ and Him crucified. Now for several months I've had this picture and I thought about putting this one on the front of the bulletin for all you coffee drinkers <laughs> I just love that picture <laughs> I'm that old rooster man I get me oh I love coffee but I just thought it was inappropriate to put on the front of the bulletin but I still like it the sunshine in the background and uh, y'all get it y'all understand it if the choir can't see it it's a it's a big old rooster and he's got a pot of coffee and he's pouring him a cup 
with the sunshine coming in the window. You can pull up on the internet and you can see it. I just love it. And then there's one other picture I want to show you. That was from this morning at Palisades Park. So if you were up there, I took that picture and uh, I, lo I love the fact, because, you know, we never know, we guess, and of course Easter moves around based on the moon phases, but sometimes the sun does already come up, you know, even when we're preparing, but I just kind of like that. That was beautiful. It's like the anticipation, the orange and the yellows, just waiting, waiting, waiting. And now that's what we celebrate. God is alive. He's alive and well. Let's bow our heads a moment. God, I'm emotional. Calm my emotions and help me to share what you put on my heart. I thank you, God, for this day and what it means to us. I pray that if there's anyone here that they're still dead in their sins, that today they will find the one who can make them alive. Holy Spirit, let your word go forth and touch the human heart as only you can. In Christ's name, amen. A week ago yesterday, last Saturday, I hand dug a grave. I hand dug a grave in the cemetery up behind the church that I grew up in. I had a pick, a post hole diggers, and a shovel. My dad was there with me. He's back there. He provided the shovel and supervision. We had the graveside service yesterday for that family. I want you to keep that thought. I'm going to come back and share the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey used to say, about this grave that I dug a week ago yesterday. Our passage today is from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. I want to encourage you to read the whole 15th chapter sometime today, perhaps maybe at bedtime. And I'm going to just select certain verses. There are two main themes that I'm going to share with you today, and they are the title of the sermon. A sensibility of sin is the first one. And we don't use that word in that context so much, but Charles Wesley wrote those words in a hymn that he wrote. A sensibility of sin, most time we would say, a sensitivity to sin. The other point that I want to make that I'll leave with you today is a sensibility of sin, and number two, a God who is alive. It's the only hope we got. So let's read what Paul read in 1 Corinthians 15 to the Corinthian church. Our Bible study group all year, we've already gone through all the way 1 Corinthians, and now we're into 2 Corinthians, and so... Paul is writing as the Holy Spirit led him to to these churches. And so I'm going to start off in verses 1 through 4, 1 Corinthians 15. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel that I preached to you, which you received and which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, this truth, gospel means truth, the gospel of Jesus Christ is the truth. By this gospel, you're saved. Are you saved? You, you cannot get saved until you first realize you're lost. By this gospel you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word that I have preached to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of First or utmost, it says in some versions, of utmost importance. Remember this line, of utmost importance, that Christ died for our sins. The early church needed to be reminded of that. The church here in 1923 and 24 needed to be reminded of that. Now in 2024, we need to be reminded of that. Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. Verse 4, that He was buried that he was raised on the third day according to the Scriptures. Now let's drop down to verse 12. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? So 
what they had done, we don't have this letter, but we can tell by what Paul wrote that they had the Corinthian church, which he had gone on to start other churches on his mission field, but they sent questions to him. You can tell by the way he's answering their questions of a letter that they sent him. And so some of them said, we don't really believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Perhaps they said, why is that important? How can some of you say, he said, that there is no resurrection of the dead? He said, if that's the case, if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Jesus Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. Your faith, my faith. If he isn't alive, our faith is useless. Verse 15, more than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that he raised Christ from the dead. But if he did not raise him, if in fact the dead are not raised, for if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. Very important verse, verse 17. I put it in bold when I printed it out. I keep the scriptures right here, but now in my life I put 14 prints so I can read it better. So I put it in bold and I underlined it, and I hope you'll do the same in your heart. Verse 17. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is futile and you're still in your sins. Can you imagine if somehow scientists proved in some way that Christ really wasn't raised from the dead? If that, would, if that happened, then we're dead. We're all still in our sins. Drop down now to verse 14. The second thing I want us to remember because he's still answering questions like what's going to happen to us when we do rise. And so in verse 54, verse 54, when, when the perishable has been clothed with imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. And so he's going to quote, and I'm going to come back, he's going to quote two prophets. Isaiah and Hosea. The saying is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. <laughs> Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? Verse 56, the sting, the sting of death is sin. And the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And if that's so, if that's true, if the Scriptures are right, and I, I gave my life to preach them, I believe they are. But thanks be to God, He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, church, therefore, all you in the balcony, therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So he gives us two important truths, the reality of sin, but also the reality of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and that you shall be raised. Romans 6.23 Some of you know it. Hear it again. Romans 6.23 for the wages, the wage, the wages of sin is what? You know, death, eternal death. That's the wage you get for your sins. That's the wage that I deserve for my sin is death. But the gift, the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Pastor Tyler preached about that at sunrise this morning. I don't deserve heaven. I know enough of the Scriptures to know what I deserve. But I know what Jesus Christ has done for us. That's why Easter is so powerful. That's why Good Friday is so powerful. That cross. 
I've got a chance. You've got a chance. God hates sin. God hates sin so much that nothing besides the death of His Son could save us from His wrath. Another scripture, though, reminds us that Jesus Christ died for us, yet while we were still... We know it. Christ died for us, yet while we were still sinners, and that that's what proves God's love for us. That's why we have to have the cross. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. Let me share a story with you that I came across two or three weeks ago. It's a basketball story since March Madness is going on. Now, some of you could care less, but some of us like to watch the March Madness and basketball. But this is, this is going way back to a player, but also a United States senator by the name of Bill Bradley. He was a senator, I believe, for several terms and, in fact, ran for presidency sometime back in the early 2000s. But before a United States senator, he was a professional basketball player a 10-year pro with the New York Knicks. Some of you may remember he was called Dollar Bill. He helped lead the team in 1970 and 1973 to an NBA championship. In college, he played for Princeton, Princeton University. Bill Bradley, get this, if you know anything about basketball, he averaged 35 points per game one year to lead all scores in the NCAA in the NCA tournament. One time, when the University at Princeton basketball court was being resurfaced, the team went to practice at nearby Lawrenceville School. Upon arrival, uh, arrival he began to, to shoot his famous 14-foot shot, jump shot. Six in a row hit the back of the rim of the basket, and it bounced off. He stopped. He seemed to kind of adjust in his brain and looked at it again, and he shot again. He hit the basket cleanly, and he made four more shots without a miss. One of his teammates was standing beside him, and he paused, and he said to his friend, You want to know something? That basket is about an inch and a half low. Bill went back to Lawrenceville a couple of weeks later with a steel measuring tape. He asked the janitor for a stepladder, and he measured the height of the basket. It was 9 feet 10 and 7 eighths inches above the floor. So it was 1 and 1 eighth inches lower than the standard height. If you don't know and you could care less, it's supposed to be 10 feet. But my point is this. Bradley, Bill Bradley, Dollar Bill, he had developed such an awareness of the proper height of the basketball, he could tell when it was off by only an inch. When you get near sin, are you aware of it? Another way to ask it, are you sensitive sin are you aware of the sin problem that you have are you aware that the scriptures clearly tell us that you and I were born into sin it all started in Genesis 3 the day you eat of this the day you disobey obey me you will surely die Adam and Eve didn't drop dead in that moment I don't know if you've noticed and looked around, but people have been dying ever since. Are you aware of your sin? I think 1 Corinthians in the Bible wants us to be aware. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures. If Christ is not risen, then you're still dead your sins. Our prayer that we would not be led into temptation might be more effective if we develop a greater sensitivity to sin that's why we need to know the Bible that's why we need to read the Bible I, I've kind of learned and observed human nature and sometimes people don't want to read the Bible because they really don't want to know what's in there 
Because it's about a God who died for our sin, but it's also how we can overcome sin. Charles Wesley knew that. Charles Wesley was John Wesley's brother. John bragged on his brother Charles and said most of the early Methodists learned their theology by singing Charles' songs. So here's one of his songs. It's in the hymn book. Don't look it up right now. You can later. We don't usually sing it. It's page number 410. The title of it is, I want, I want a principle within. I want this within me. That's the opening line of the first sentence. Let me read two or three lines from the song. I want a principle within of watchful godly fear, a sensibility of sin, a pain to feel it near. I, I want first approach to feel the pride or wrong desire, to catch the wandering of my will and quench the kindling fire. Verse 2, O oh God, my conscience make, awake my soul when sin is nigh, when sin is near is the way we would say it. Awake my soul when sin is nigh and keep it, keep it still awake. Almighty God of truth and love, to me thy power impart. The mountain from my soul remove the hardness from my heart. Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and for my sins. When you get near sin, are you aware of it? Jesus said that I'll send my spirit to live within you and he will convict the world of sin. We need to be close to the Holy Spirit so that he can teach us and guide us to stay away from sin. I want a principle within. That's the, the first lesson. The second lesson. When Jesus came alive, he conquered sin on that cross but when he came alive he also conquered death in fact in 1 Corinthians I didn't read this verse this is 1 Corinthians 15 26 the last enemy for we humans the last enemy that will be destroyed is death so then Paul wrote these words so I want to share with you the two quotes from the Old Testament Isaiah 25, 8, if you're writing it down, I don't have these on the screen. But listen to this as I'm going to come back to the, the dug that I grave, the grave that I dug. Let me get that right. Some of y'all thought, wow. So in 1 Corinthians 15, Paul quotes from these two Old Testament prophets. So Isaiah, Isaiah 25, 8, listen to the New Testament flair that it has to it. God will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove His people's disgrace from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. The other prophet was Hosea. Hosea 13.4 Hosea 13.4 I will deliver this people from the power of the grave. I will redeem them from death. Where, O oh death, are your plagues? Where, O oh grave, is your destruction? Let's go back to that, that grave that I dug last Saturday. We had the graveside service for the family yesterday. It was for my mother. Some of y'all are doing the math. Some of you that don't know, but my mother died October the 7th, 2022. It's been a year and a half. Let me share the rest of the story. My mother and my dad signed paperwork that when they die, their bodies would go to UAB for research and science. On October the 7th, when Mother died, she, we had the bed there in the sunroom. She died. 
we gathered and we called immediately to UAB and gave them the number and the information and so they immediately send people to come and get the cadaver and so they came and got her body before they did I, I asked the two guys that were going to get her could our family gather and just pray and so they prayed with us and I prayed and, and it felt a little funny and my, my mother's dad A.D. Powell he had done the same thing granddaddy died in 2000 he also gave his body for research and science at UAB and what happens is students who are doing surgery may operate on the eyes they may do a surgery for open heart and so they have a cadaver to do that they do research and so forth so the process is that you will receive the remains back up to two years and they will be cremated so a couple of weeks ago they contacted dad and and so we got our ashes back. So now some of you are realizing I didn't have to dig a bigger grave as you thought I did. We ordered a small vault so the ashes could fit in them. We sealed it yesterday, and we didn't really plan to do it this weekend, but what a weekend to do it, Easter weekend. And so we buried it, and took shovel and dirt and we filled up and by the way it was really only about a, a foot and a half this way and a foot and a half this way and about two feet deep but we buried her the headstone that dad has and if dad passes away before my sister and I then we'll, we'll bury dad there beside mother in the ashes of some of you know that we were at Red Hill the church that I grew up in so I have four grandparents in fact granddaddy Beck and Grandmother Beck were laying right there beside where we put and our son Dave he's right there so that was the setting yesterday there was just three of us there at the graveside service it was my sister Pam myself and dad we got ready we, we knelt down daddy knelt down and we placed the little vault down in the ground and we began to put on the dirt and it wasn't a sad occasion I, I've teared up a little more than I did in the early service but it, it wasn't sad and so we gathered around my sister and my dad and we just gathered over mother after we'd put the dirt on. And y'all, we, we praised God. I said a prayer and I thanked God. Uh, I, I didn't have it all planned out, but I said, Lord, Pam and I want to thank you for a mother and a dad who've taught us the truth of the Scriptures. They've taught us that we need to repent of our sins. They've taught us all our lives that our God is alive. Therefore, we have a living hope. Peter wrote that to the church in 1 Peter. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, we have a living hope. That's why Mike Buckaloo got choked up. When we, when we feel the penetrating peace of Christ, when we repent of our sins and He comes inside of us, and we know that that weight is lifted and then it's going to be okay because the one who came for us, he conquered both sin and death. So the joy that we had at that moment at that graveside is we're going to see Paula Beck again. Paula Bell Powell Beck. Let me get it all in. Isn't that glorious that we can say that? And yes, I know the grief is real. I don't deny that. But the truth is real too. The gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why we have hope. And so I, I close out and just ask you today, knowing that the last enemy is death, are you prepared for that? Our theme has been prepare your heart. I, I want to ask you, are you aware of sin in your life? But are you aware that there's a God who died for you? If you've never accepted Christ, go to the cross. Go to the cross. And say, Jesus, I don't want to die in my sins. I want to have that hope that you're speaking about. I'll tell you, if you'll repent of your sins, there's nothing you've done that he can't forgive. You could be saved today. You could ask Christ in your heart. Us pastors, we'd love to pray with you.
Heavenly Father, we praise you this morning. We thank you for these two truths, that sin and death have been conquered by our God who is alive. So we praise your holy name. Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts right now. If someone needs to respond to that, even right now in this moment, they can pray and receive Christ. But if they need to come to the altar, God, give them that freedom and that boldness to say, I need Jesus. Bless this moment, and may it count for eternity, for we pray it in the name of Jesus Christ, the strong Son of God. And everyone said, Amen. The choir is going to sing, and y'all know that we uh, share in the, uh, the Hallelujah Chorus. Some of you will know those words. So the choir is going to lead us and sing. And, uh, but don't let that hinder. If you want to come to the altar and some that want to sing in the choir, y'all come up. Some of them are making the way, Lauren. We, there's books right here. If you want to sing with the choir, you can. But let's stand together and praise our God for what He's done for us. The altar is open.
That is our benediction. Hallelujah. Everybody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. God bless you.